Okay, Layla, are you ready to color? Yeah. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we've decided we are going to re-record the coloring part. So, uh, Layla, remind me, what are what's the difference between warm and cool colors? Um, the the warm colors feel like they're warm. Yeah. So, give me a couple examples good. of warm colors. Can you tell us? Red. Mm -hmm. Yellow. Orange. Brown. And pink. Okay, so taking a look at um, our picture, does he use warm or cool colors up top? Warm. Warm, yep. And if you take a look, he's got one or two little pops of cool colors coming through for the sky. But one of the most um, iconic things about his picture was that he was so struck by the sunset and that's what really captured him. So in this top part, when we start coloring, I want you guys to pick a lot of really nice warm colors to bring through there to represent that, that warm sunset. And then you can layer in a couple lines of blue and one of the things that I really liked that he did was uh, bring in some white to highlight it on top. So we're gonna start there with some warm colors. The most important thing to keep in mind is that when you're going across, did he use vertical or horizontal lines? Horizontal. Horizontal, he did some horizontal swooping lines through there. And so we're gonna take our pastels and we're gonna take some swooping lines through there and we're gonna kind of layer the colors next to each other and lay them on top of each other, but making sure that we keep, um, let's, we don't wanna do that in case that's distracting, okay, Layla? Um, we wanna keep all of our lines kind of swooping together in this horizontal movement that brings our eye just kind of floating across the sunset. Yeah, go for it. So we'll start layering those. If you guys are using pastels, the cool thing that you can do with pastels is take your smear it. smear it and smudge it. So you can take your finger and kind of smear it across. Yeah, you want to do the rest? But the thing to keep in mind is that you want to smear it in the direction of your directional lines. So if you're doing lines this way, you don't want to smear it horizontal. If you're using markers or paint or um, colored pencils or crayons, just keep your lines going in the direction of your horizon and that'll help create those swoopy lines. But if you're doing pastels, that would be going with it. Okay, so now that I have my colors in here, this is where I'm gonna go back through with some white and do a couple of pops of white accent through here. Maybe I'll do it with my black lines a little bit. Look at mine! Looking good, little bug. You ready to start smearing yours? Almost. This is all I can do? Huh? No, you keep going. Keep going as long as you need. And like that stuff. That's called pastels. And like I've said before, um, feel free to pause the video in case you need more time doing something. So now that I've got the white, I'm gonna smear that in a little bit. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna add a couple of those pops of blue. I've already done that. All right, those blue and greens. Where are those pastels? Right here in this case, babe. Okay. What are pastels, babe? They a couple of the smear. blues and greens back in there. And then blend those in. Okay, Layla's gonna keep working on her sky and I'm gonna explain this next part. So if you are not ready, you just keep working, pause the video and keep going until you're ready. So the next part we're gonna focus on is actually this little piece of water that reflects the sky up here. So if you notice, there's some blue that incorporates the water um, and a lot of white highlights, but it also is bringing in those pinks to show that the water was reflecting this super vibrant sunset. So yeah. you're gonna want a little bit of blue, a little pink, um, a little bit of white or gray, and then a little bit of black to kind of incorporate all the black water that comes in over here. 
Okay, one thing I forgot to mention, when you start in on your water part, make sure your directional lines and your lines with your crayons or markers or whatever you're using kind of go with the flow of the water. So horizontal lines, but then kind of swooping, swirling motions around there. Okay, Layla had a great uh, question. She said, oops, I went through my people, and I reminded her that that's perfectly fine because later she's gonna use black to draw her people back in. So don't worry if you go over the top of your people or if you smear your colors in there. Um, in Monk, Monk's picture, he does have two little boats in there, so if you want, you can take a black and kind of incorporate two little sailboats in there. And to kind of blend them into the picture, I'm gonna use my finger and just kind of smudge it in a little bit. At least I'm caught up. You did catch up, you caught up fast too. Oh. Oops, smudged a little too much. But you know what? It's okay, um, I'm actually gonna take my black too and I'm gonna bring in a couple of lines in there and kind of smear those in as well because um, Mook has a lot of that in his picture. See how this, and that'll kind of help blend this part into the dark water that we're gonna do next. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for this next part, we are gonna head into the dark part of the water. If you notice that Monk uses a lot of black, so you're gonna use either a dark black or a really dark blue if you don't have black, and that's gonna be the focus of a lot of this water with some swirls of pink kind of swirled in there and lots of kind of scratchy um, accents of blue. But notice those directional lines. He uses those lines to kind of lead your way around the water so you can be deliberate about where you put those. Okay, this next part that we're gonna do is this land mass over here. So if you notice, it's quite a bit lighter. Um, we're going to bring in some more pinks, kind of helping reflect the, the sunset again, some blues, and most importantly, these black lines showing that the direction of the, the land is vertical and kind of going along with the curves <laughs> instead of horizontal like our water. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Okay, how's it going guys? For this next step, we are going to get to the railings. The most important thing to notice about the railing is that the top part of each of the three railing is once again reflecting some of those warm colors from the sky up here. So you're gonna take either a pink or a red or orange and go along the top and you can do some white also with like a white crayon would be cool or if you have their white pastel um, to do those white highlights. If you're using paint, you can wait until it dries and then layer some white paint over the top to kind of help bring in um, some of that light reflection there. And then you can use a black or a brown to do your railings across. If you make a mistake, this is something that you should learn. If you make a mistake, you can always make it better by drawing something that you want to. And um, then you can make it into something that you'd like in your picture. So like maybe another human. Or maybe if it's in the water, maybe you can make it a animal in the water. That could, yeah. 
so this this is just an observation you don't have to do it but i'd rather prefer you do <laughs> bye thanks layla actually go ahead and keep it going babe so the next step the next step that we're gonna do is this middle shading and our boardwalk over here. Yay! <laughs> We're getting there, huh? Yeah. So if you notice in Moong's picture, he actually just kind of takes some dark colors and uses those blues and pinks um, to highlight a little bit, but he mostly just shades in between there. If you want, you can, you can continue the background of your water back through your fence if you want. I'm just gonna take some grays and blues and pinks and kind of shade inside of there. Uh, the most important thing to remember about your path here is that your directional lines need to be very um, deliberate, meaning make sure that they are going up and down with the direction of your fence here. And once again, he uses the opportunity to kind of reflect this sunrise, so you can use some warm colors and black shading and a little bit of blue back in there. And then you, my friends, will be ready to cut and paste your picture on there. Yay! <laughs> All right, artists, so now's a chance to take a step back at your art and just kind of check and see if there's any spots that you want to add any highlights or different colors. And if you're happy with it the way that it is, then you print out your picture that I sent in the email and cut it out and you're going to paste it right on the top here. All right, artists, last, last step is gluing your picture onto your painting and then you are good to go make sure you send in your final products to us we would love to see your finished pictures um Layla and I did a couple practices when we were trying to record these video earlier so and our printer's not working so we had to cut off one from one of our old pictures so I uh, will reprint Layla's later and uh put her real one on there but we just wanted to show you what it looks like but we can't wait to see our finished art. We hope you enjoyed this. I know it takes a while, but I know your art is going to be beautiful in the end. Great job, guys. <laughs>